Hi, welcome to the 6502 show. You know, I was thinking about the video that we did a little bit ago about code test, Stan Ocker's Morse code practice program. And I was thinking, hey, you know, there's some more fun that we can have with the PB7 line on an unexpanded PAL-1. So let's get to it. Here we have a couple of pieces of code that will do a few things using PB7 as an output. The first one here has an origin of 0400, and all it does is outputs a sound on the port into our speaker that we had hooked up. Same speaker circuit, one transistor. I mean, it's about as simple as it can possibly get, and it'll spit out our sound for us. It'll do it for, uh, you know, a second or so, and that's about it. Over here on the right, at Origin 500, we have a little blinking program. This is going to blink five times, uh, right there. And all we're going to do is make bit 7 of port B. Actually, that should be PBD. Should be a D right there. My bad comments. But we'll set the port's direction and set bit 7, and then we're just going to turn it on. And until time 1 becomes a, um, a 1, we'll just keep rolling around back up to the timer. And then we'll decrement and go again. And we're going to do the pretty much the exact same thing for the exact same time interval, except this time, instead of making, um, instead of turning on the port, we're going to load it with nothing instead of 80. So we're going to turn that bit off and that will turn off our LED. All right, let's go give this ladder program a little run. Okay, we've got our code loaded in and let's see five blinkies. Looked like five to me. Mission accomplished. Okay, we've got our code up here on the screen and we'll take a quick look. We're going to loop four times through this timer at this frequency. That's it. It's going to beep. Reset this to 80 from my earlier test. Now we'll give it a go. Very exciting stuff. Let's go back and give that a little gravitas. Or let's uh, get a little excited. Now let's take a look at two snippets of code that will allow us to read PB7 and bring data from the outside world into the PAL-1. Well, right here we've got our register set. We're going to use PBD and PBDD. And we've got our timer set here and then a couple of pieces of code for uh, the Kim one ROM and a little temporary variable that we'll use. 
Actually, I don't think we use it in this. This might be a holdover from something else I was doing, but yeah, whatever. It won't assemble. Okay, the first bit is here at string 0400. We're just going to set up the normal way uh, for the data direction for register B on the 6532. We're going to load into the accumulator whatever we find there. And whatever we find there, we're just simply going to print it. We're just going to print those two hex numbers, and that's what we're going to have. We'll print a carriage return, and then we're just going to go back infinitely forever and ever and ever ever. Well, as exciting as that is, this is a little bit better. At uh, 0420, what we're going to have is a little program that sets up the same way, but we're going to, based on what we read in the register, we're going to do a comparison, and if bit 7 is off, we're going to go, well, do something. If bit 7 is off, we will uh, go here. If bit seven is on, then we're gonna go to closed and we'll print CL and loop back again. And of course, these su subroutines here, closed and open, could be anything. Based on the condition of the switch, you could send the program to go do anything you wanted it to do or not do, as the case may be, all with just a single bit. So. That's pretty cool for uh, only having one line of uh, an I.O. chip to read. All right, for our input, we're going to use the button, the fire button, on the paddle that I recently made for my VIC-20. I've got it wired up thusly. We've got voltage from 5 volts off of the expansion connector coming in to pin 3. On pin 8, we're going to connect to PB7 on the uh, expansion connector. And that way, when the switch is open, we've got no voltage flowing into PB7, so it's off. And if we close the switch, well, five volts goes there, and that means that should be a one. All right, let's go see it in action. Okay, we've got our demo program loaded, and we're ready to give the paddle a test. Here we go. From the Wasmon, of course. That's why the 400R is there. All right. So, 47s are showing. If I click the button, C7 is showing. Well, guess what? Because bit 7 got triggered. Let it go. Boom. Push it in. Boom. Let it go. There you go. Not too difficult. And, of course, if we want to have it do something else, we can just test for these conditions. And now we've got our demonstration program loaded, and we can see what the switch will do. Hmm, it's open. If I press the switch, eh, it's closed. Open. Closed. Open. Closed. Well, we have two states here. So you can do something that you would like to do with this information. You know, you can branch somewhere, you can do something based on what's happening. If you don't have that second 6532 chip, you can still get at least a signal, a one or a zero, into and out of the PAL-1 computer. While a second riot chip would make things a lot easier, there's still a lot of fun to be had with just that one data line on PB7. You could, for example, use that line to energize a relay, and that relay could then key a ham transmitter and you could then build yourself a little keyer program, a little memory keyer. Be pretty handy. See how folks did it way back in the 70s and in the 80s with 8-bit personal computers. You know, the other thing you could do is you could get yourself a shift register, build a little, say, A to D converter, and then you could bring in data from the outside world, maybe a temperature sensor cutoff where you have a predetermined voltage that would... Uh, result in an off state and turn off whatever thing you wanted to turn off. The possibilities just abound. Well, thanks for watching the 6502 show. It's my pleasure to bring it to you. If you liked this video, and I hope you did, please subscribe, like it, all the wonderful things that you can do for those of us who make videos on YouTube. 
So until we see each other again, take care.